Welcome to the Crime After Crime first anniversary special starring da. John. Oh, you want to do some music? Go ahead, Danielle. Let me hear it. I am. I'm, I'm over here bebopping to like some game show yeah, music. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. Ba -da -ba -ba -da. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Precisely. It's featuring John Lorden and... Danielle Helen. Da, 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 da. I like it. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm getting down. Also with it. <laughs> featuring several guest appearances by. Oh, <gasps> you're gonna have to wait to find out. <laughs> tricky, tricky. <laughs> but yes, we have many guest appearances. Maybe even a guest appearance that Danielle doesn't know about. All right. See, why does this not surprise mm. me? Leave it to John. <laughs> mm. I had to pull out all the stops. It is our first anniversary special. And we want to start by giving a huge thank you to you guys, because we can't do this without you. This has been an awesome year. The show keeps growing. Uh, it's It's been amazing. So thank you so much for coming along for the ride this first year and being a part of Crime After Crime. Yep, it has been absolutely awesome. Oh my goodness, I remember creating the plan for this show. I knew it was going to be great, but you guys have made this absolutely awesome. And I, I loved the twist we created with the voting and everything. I was honestly worried people wouldn't like it. A year later, though, you guys have loved it, and it has become probably one of my favorite parts of the show. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. It's been it's been such an awesome journey. I feel like this has been so different and unique, and I am so happy we decided to do this. Yep, whole ab year. Absolutely, and you guys know this is a special episode. Um, you know, we're not really big on the whole like beer and crime or wine and crime movement, but. For those of you that are out there, there's nothing wrong with that. And considering that this is an episode about Florida man, Danielle made a comment to me a couple days ago and I thought it was a great idea. So if you want to become a Florida man yourself, or if you want to pass out halfway through today's episode, take a shot every time you hear one of us say the word Florida. <laughs> Because you're going to hear it a you, lot. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to hear it a lot. I was struggling so hard the other day. I was, you know, looking into cases. I was researching everything. And first of all, my whole stomach hurt so bad from laughing so hard. I was not sure I was going to make it through my research. And then I think I sent a random message to John on Twitter. And I was frantically typing out that I was worried I wasn't going to find something. And I probably said the word Florida like over seven times in the course of like two <laughs> sentences. And I was like, you know what? Forget it. I'm having a rough time right now. I'm taking a shot every time I hear the word Florida. I'm doing yep. it. I might not make it to the episode, <laughs> but. That's where the brilliant idea came from. And if you're keeping tabs, I think we've had seven shots already in the past minute. So someone's going to be hitting the floor. Yeah. Uh, before we get to the Florida man stories, though, we have business to attend to. We've got this whole competition thing that's been going on for a year. We've got a figure out what's going on with that. If you want to vote, you can do that at Crime After Pod on Twitter for seven days after the episode drops or you guys can also vote on YouTube. You can vote at any time, hover your mouse over the screen on a desktop or just hold your finger on the video on your phone. A little I letter I will pop up in the corner. Maybe that's the I that's missing from my name. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's we jumped. found it. Yeah. <laughs> we found it, you guys. Yeah, we tell your mom. Tell your mom that uh, you found where she dropped the eye. It's been in YouTube <laughs> all these years. Uh, um, okay, so here we are with voting results with Danielle for our last episode, Criminal Doctors. All right, guys. On Twitter, I received 76% of the votes. Ooh. And John received 24. I never Ooh. in my wildest dreams would have imagined that. Wow. Wow. Ever. My bum hurts. <laughs> I don't get it personally. <laughs> I appreciate it so much, you guys, but I don't get it. <laughs> and then on YouTube, I received 80% of the votes and John Ooh. received 20, which brings us to six for me and six for John. Ouch. But it's As, not just the fact that we're tied. I got thumped. Wow, I don't understand. Danielle. You know, I, I do. I think I do. Because your story, the guy was so malicious. He was doing terrible things to people. It was Mine, just wild. 
Yeah, mine was doing bad things to people, but basically because he was trying to rip off insurance companies and and make a ton of money. Your guy was just kind of evil, you know? Your guy was evil too, though, because he was ripping off of people. But I mean, in one of the most insane ways, he could have gone about that probably many different ways. But to convince people they have cancer, I'm telling you, I was talking to a lot of people because they were like, Danielle, it's coming up. Who's going to win? And usually, usually I can feel it out. Usually I can kind of think about who I think is going to take the cake. But this is probably one of the few times where I have for sure had no idea. I was sure it was going to be the closest, closest tie. So I don't know what I did right last episode, Yeah, but (laughs) hopefully that carries on. And because of that thumping, I have to hand the mug over that I've only had for a month. Gosh, darn it. Coming back over to you, Danielle. There Thank you go. Thank you. Yep. Hope you enjoy Camomile, it. <laughs> he gave me some sleepy time tea. He's trying to he's trying to win this one back. That's right. And remember <laughs> to have a shot every time I say Florida, 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 Florida. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Danielle seems to be out of this episode. <laughs> right. Okay. So that means we're at six and six. That means we are tied. So who actually won season one? We have a team of experts crunching numbers. They're going through all the individual polls. They're pulling all those numbers down, coming out with a calculation. It's going to take them, oh, I don't know, about 40 minutes or so. So I guess we're going to do the rest of the episode first. And at the end of the episode, we're going to find out who the winner of season one is. So as usual, we love having a little educational piece before we start our main topic. Why Florida, man? Why did all of this happen? Well, thanks to the Miami News Times and the New York Times, we can get a much better idea. All right, guys. Florida is the third largest state by population. So you have a much higher chance of finding strange stories. Very good point. Very good point. On top of that, Florida is a mix of cultures from other states and even countries. There's no defining characterization of being a Floridian, so everything that's kind of what is the norm there's no norm so everything seems quote weird billy corbin a documentary director states that's the most common misconception about florida that we are a melting pot we are more akin to a tv dinner where sometimes the peas spill over into the mashed potatoes (laughs) (laughs) i love i love (sighs) billy corbin and by the way that was the new york times uh quoting him All right, guys, and the weather. People love to be outdoors in Florida. When drugs, drinking, and partying happens indoors, we usually don't hear many of these stories, but take it outdoors and more people, cameras, and cops are there to know what's happening. Absolutely. Trouble always happens in the summer here. It's summer all the time there. So that's a good point. That's a good point. I wonder if we can do uh, North Carolina man as a challenge at some point. Uh, oh, there's de- there will be stories. I'll tell you we, that. We actually do have in the on the ideas board um, where we do a story from both of our native states. Mm-hmm. So ma- maybe even Minnesota man will pop up there. Um, but back to Florida, the biggest factor may be the Government in the Sunshine Act. It essentially considers all government affairs open for the public to review. Records, photos, videos are easily accessible, and the public is invited to all meetings held by public officials, including their private meetings. Journalists, I didn't know that. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah, that's if, interesting. Basically, if something goes on their docket and it's a meeting that they're having about a public issue, the public has the right to be there in Florida. Uh, journalists can request arrest reports directly from the police departments. So the police departments are all used to this. They basically just, here, we'll send you an email. Here's the arrest report. Uh, there's no drawn out FOIA request records process needed or anything like that. Uh, the police are actually required to provide those reports and will frequently email them to journalists if they aren't hosted online for public review already. As a matter of fact, you might notice that many of these stories will feature the words according to the arrest report. Um, because yep. this is such a usual mechanic for these Florida man stories. They're basically just looking at the arrest report to pull that information together. Also, Kyle Munzenreader, the journalist that wrote the piece for Miami News Times, makes a very interesting and thought-provoking point. 
So perhaps the next time you read a weird Florida news story, don't ask why Florida is so weird. Ask why you are not hearing about the weirdness in other states. It might have something to do with their lack of open government. That is something I never would have thought of before. Wow. Yeah. And Danielle, just take a moment and stop to think about how many cases we've looked into on our YouTube channels where we can't get anything in terms of official police reports. Exactly. We know this community. We know many people file Freedom of Information Act requests. You never get a thing back or they'll say, you know, open investigation, can't release any information. Um, it's pretty amazing to me that uh, they have this policy. I don't know why more states don't have that. Yeah. F finally, um, I love Billy Corbin's quotes so much. I have to end with one here. Los Angeles is where you go when you want to be somebody. New York is where you go when you are somebody. Miami is where you go when you want to be somebody else. <laughs> And that is why Florida Man is here, and it appears he isn't going away anytime soon. All right, Danielle, I'm ready. I am ready, too, John. Oh, Lord, I don't know if I'm going to win with this story. Oh, don't be worried already. What? You, haven't, but, you have no idea what I'm covering. But how... I, I'll just get into it. Just wait. Okay. Just wait. In this past year, we've gone through many topics and discussed some of the most insane crimes, as you guys all know. And I feel like I couldn't possibly wrap up a year of crime after crime without bringing in a few pieces of our amazing old episodes to welcome in the new year. So for a quick walk down memory lane, one of the most insane stories John told that I think about all the time was in the Disorderly Dads episode, where he spoke about a man known as Rooster that was a part of generations of criminal parents and kids. And one of my favorite episodes as well was Most Bizarre Getaway, I'm personally still partial to my story of the man whose escape was an inner tube. So <laughs> hold on. We can't we can't not put his name in there. You're talking about DB, DB Tuber. Tuber. <laughs> yes. yes. Wow. So when I stumbled upon a Florida man whose nickname is the Rooster, <laughs> and he planned a crime involving the most ridiculous getaway, I knew it was meant to be. Oh, and to make yeah. and to make it better. It brings two viral trends together. So this is what happens when you put Florida Man and the Old Town Road together. All right. I'm going for it. <laughs> Lonnie Maddox was a 52-year-old man from Spring Hill, Florida. And on July 25th of this year, he set out for an adventure. Lonnie, a.k.a. The Rooster, was creating a plan to break into a Port Ritchie home. But as we've learned over the past year, to be a successful criminal, you need a bulletproof plan. And if you don't know that, you've missed all of our greatest episodes. <laughs> a good getaway <laughs> is one of the most crucial elements to that plan. Now, some people like to keep things simple. Some like to get creative, like DB Tuber, but some prefer to keep things old fashioned, like Wild West old fashioned. And Lonnie was one of those people, so he figured his best bet at a getaway from the scene of the crime would be to hop on the back of a beautiful brown horse named Angel. <laughs> So Hold on, around. does this crime take place in 1804? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it just gets weirder. So at around 10.20 a.m. Thursday, July 25th, 2019, so not even that long ago, Lonnie hopped on his four-legged partner in crime bareback with no shoes and no shirt and headed to a home in Shalimar Street in Pasco County, Florida. Now, he lived in a different city that was about 30 minutes away by car. I have no idea how he managed to get here. Did he ride the horse the whole way? I don't even know. But the burglary wasn't going to be an easy one because the home was surrounded by a locked fence meant for cattle that they had to break through and the house looked like it was locked up pretty tight as well. So after breaking down a part of the fence, Lonnie and Angel took a few loops around the house, scoping out possible points of entry, and they figured their best bet would be through the screened-in porch up front. Now the porch was locked, so Lonnie had to resort to sticking his hand through the screen to unlock it. And then both Lonnie and Angel walked up the stairs and onto the screen porch. <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I was just going to say like a sentence or two ago, is he talking to Angel about how do we get in? I mean, it sounds like they're, they're cohorts, like they're working on this crime together. I don't know, but, I, I, but I'm now, going with it. <laughs> and now you're telling me they go in and go upstairs together? <laughs> yes. Um, I have photos. And if I can find the videos to put in, the vi in our video on YouTube wow. version, you will be seeing this happen. It's the most oh. Wow. absurd thing I've ever seen. Wow. So 
They were presented with another problem. The house was clearly being renovated and worked on, so there was a big padlock on the front door. Now, Lonnie tried his hand at unlocking the box, but after many failed attempts, he realized that he would have to come up with another plan. Lonnie let his trusty companion back out into the yard and did another loop around the house, and this time he spotted a window he believed he could shimmy open. He had no choice but to drop Angel's lead line and manhandle the window to get inside. He managed to break the window, causing about $100 of damage, but that was the least of his worries. He quickly crawled in the window, leaving Angel outside to hopefully snag a few items within the home. But there really wasn't anything to take, so after a few minutes of searching around the empty house, Lonnie unlocked the back door and headed out in defeat. Now, what Lonnie didn't know was that Steve Ferguson, the owner of the property, was getting notifications on his phone from the security system the entire time. Nice. Nice. Steve, Steve had an issue with repeated robberies of this particular home, so he was always on high alert. It was the perfect target. It was surrounded by tons of vegetation on a very quiet road, old town road, say it as you will. He had even installed the locked fence in hopes of keeping people away after many calls to authorities. So he knew what he would likely see when he checked the footage, and sure enough, he saw it, a man wandering around his property, but what he didn't expect to see was a horse. <laughs> At first, he wasn't too concerned because who would rob a house with a horse as a getaway? So Steve believed this man was likely harmless and just taking a look at the property. But after reviewing the footage further, he realized the absurd scenario he had brushed off was actually what was happening. He watched Lonnie climb in his window. So his robbery nightmare was continuing. Mm -hmm. But Steve also knew something else that Lonnie didn't know. As he was climbing in the window, Angel made a break for it. Angel, Angel took off. Angel took off running. Oh, don't you hate when the getaway driver does that? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Lonnie's getaway was gone and Steve was calling the police. So officers showed up on the scene shortly after the report was called in and began to inspect the home. To their surprise, Lonnie approached them out of nowhere, completely casual, asking them if they just so happened to see a horse run by. <laughs> At this point, they knew a horse was involved in the crime thanks to Steve's security footage, so Lonnie had essentially turned himself in by doing this. Wow. Lonnie seemed so distressed over Angel being lost, but this gave authorities the perfect moment to detain him and ask him about the break-in, and Lonnie gave them quite the story. So Lonnie told authorities that his horse got loose that morning, and in order to bring her back safely, he followed her on foot and watched her get into a broken section of the fence. Okay. This seems plausible so far. Mm -hmm. So then he followed her across the property line, and then he claimed that she herself broke into the screened porch and then broke into the home. So he said he wasn't the one that was responsible for breaking into the house. His horse did. And oh, he, had, he had no bad intentions at all. So after <laughs> listening to this hilarious rendition of what happened that morning, authorities confronted Lonnie, and they told him they knew the horse was not responsible. <laughs> <laughs> They had security footage straight from the homeowner that he was being watched the entire time. And yeah. instead of admitting defeat, he persisted he was innocent, but now with another excuse for being in the home, and this one didn't even include the horse at all. So Lonnie began to say he was in the market for a home to rent, so he went to check out this property. He said it looked abandoned and he wanted to rent it, but he couldn't rent a house if he hadn't seen the inside of it. So clearly, Good point. Good <laughs> clearly point. he had to break in. Oh, you didn't know that, Danielle? When I went shopping for my home, we were just, you know, crawling in through the window of houses where it didn't look like people were living. Are you from Florida? <laughs> <laughs> Minnesota man. So these stories obviously just weren't holding up compared to the footage. So Lonnie ended up being arrested of burglary of a dwelling. And it was found that this wasn't his first rodeo. But um Oh, nice. I, like I, had, I had to add it in there. Yeah. He had a long list of criminal charges in the past, and he was actually lucky burglary wasn't the only charge he caught for the charade this day. Police still had the task of locating Angel. And she ended oh. up, I know, she ended up being found wandering another neighborhood, hopefully not scoping out more houses, about two miles away, where good Samaritans managed to grab her lead line and keep her from running further. Now, Deputy, Deputy Doolittle, and this is actually what he referred to himself as, yeah. because he said he responds to so many calls like this. Wow. I'm not really sure where to start with that <laughs> statement. <laughs> but he showed up to where Angel was found, gained her trust by feeding her animal cookies, which I personally think is barbaric. But <laughs> she ended up being handed over to Pasco County Animal Control and was later reunited with her owner. So does this mean she was reunited with Lonnie? 
No, because Lonnie was not her owner. Nobody has any idea how he managed to get this horse, how far exactly he rode it, how he even came up with a plan to use a horse as a getaway when he didn't even have one to begin with. There's just a whole bunch of unanswered questions. Yeah. What are you going to do with that 50 inch TV? Oh, I'm going to throw it on the back of the horse. I, I just, what What are you expecting? I guess maybe he's looking for smalls, right? Uh, jewelry, cash, things like that. But he stole the horse before he broke into the house with the horse. Exactly. It makes absolutely no sense at wow. all. The title, wow. the headlines were Florida man blames horse for break in. And I want to say a huge thank you to Fox 13 News, Tampa Bay.com, and West Florida News for their articles on this bizarre Florida man crime. Yeah. Um, I almost wish that Angel was truly the mastermind because uh, the crime probably would have went better. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> And Absolutely. I love that I love that he's blaming the horse for them oh. breaking in. Uh-huh. He sure did. Oh my goodness. And there's it's so funny because if I'm able to hopefully I'm able to find the video. I know for a fact I have pictures to add into the YouTube version, but Yeah. I mean, this horse looks happy as can be. He's just tagging. She's tagging along for the ride. Looks like she's having a great time. Well, she's a I smart mean, one. She got out of there. You know, she probably saw there was cameras in there. And, oh, I'm out. Like she didn't question walking up the stairs into <laughs> a front porch. And like I've owned a horse before. I've been surrounded by horses my whole life. Yeah. She's a great horse. <laughs> she went with yeah. a stranger and then happily walked up onto a front porch. I think it's hilarious. Yeah. But then ditched him as soon as she could. Good move, Angel. She's like, wait Good. a minute. I don't think this guy's a good one. I need to run. <laughs> There's a lesson there, ladies. There's a lesson there. Oh, learn learn so from funny. Angel. Um, I love that his nickname was Rooster. And yeah, you're right. That name seems to kick around. As a matter of fact, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the play Annie or maybe even the old, yep. the old movie about it. But, you know, Rooster yep. is one of the characters in it. Rooster. Back, back when I did community theater, I might have played Rooster once in the past. <laughs> Oh, man. Pretty good story, Danielle. I don't know. I don't know. And what was the, uh, give me the headline on it again. Florida man blames horse for breaking. <laughs> Only in Florida. Only in Florida. It's funny how much, and now that I've been looking into Florida man stories, how often I hear that. There's even a podcast, I guess, about specific, specific ugh, if I can get the word out, specifically about Florida man stories. I know one of the local newspapers is now focusing on, you know, featuring Florida man stories. And I think they're doing some digital content also. This thing is just growing and growing yep. over the past few years. Yep. I know there was a Twitter account. Um, but I believe he has now retired the Twitter account, the guy that started all of, well, most of this nonsense wow. several years ago. All right. Well, we will be back right after this very quick break. Are you looking for more energy, better sleep to maintain stress or something else to help you feel your healthiest? Then you need care of. Care of is a subscription service that delivers vitamins and supplements customized for your specific health needs. You take a short quiz and answer questions about your diet, lifestyle, fitness, and health goals, and Care of puts together a personalized plan just for you. We both did the quiz. Danielle, what'd you think? It was awesome. It was fun and colorful, and it took things into consideration that I would not have thought of. That's fun was a big part that I was not expecting. It really was fun and interesting. The online quiz only takes five minutes and you'll find out your personal scientifically backed vitamin and supplement recommendations. What'd you learn, Danielle? Based off of my diet and my allergy to shellfish, they suggested Omega fish oil, which is shellfish free, which is really difficult for me to find. And it helps heart health, which is one of my biggest concerns. As you know, Danielle, I'm a vegetarian. My wife's a vegan and we need our Omega threes from a source other than fish. Care of has vegetarian and vegan supplement options available. They'll also ensure that you're getting the nutrients you need for those specific diets. You can also modify your subscription at any time when your needs or preferences change at TakeCareOf.com. For 25% off your first Care Of order, go to TakeCareOf.com and enter crime after crime. Get back into a healthy routine and get 25% off your first Care Of order. Go to TakeCareOf.com and enter crime after crime right now. Take care of you with Care Of. All right, John, I have a serious question for you. Have you ever been sent on the dreaded tampon run? Oh, what man hasn't, Danielle? I'm tired of buying stuff I don't need just to cover up that one purchase. 
Well, I have a solution for you. Lola is a female founded company here to support other women that want easy access to feminine care products. Lola offers organic 100% cotton tampons, liners, pads, and natural cleansing wipes. And the coolest thing about them is they have a subscription service that will deliver feminine products straight to your door. Well, who wants a big obvious box of tampons sitting on the stoop? Don't worry, it comes in completely discreet packaging, so none of my nosy neighbors have any idea what's inside. It's also really easy for me to personalize my shipment, and I can even skip or cancel one if I don't need it. I love the convenience of Lola. What about the quality? Well, did you know that the FDA doesn't require brands to disclose a comprehensive list of ingredients in their feminine care products? Most major brands use synthetic ingredients, chemical cleansing agents, fragrances, dyes, and I personally have reactions to most of those things, so I'm always on the lookout for a good natural alternative. Let me guess, Lola has that covered too? Absolutely, they're completely transparent about their ingredients. I can finally feel good about products that I need to use monthly without any fear that I'm putting something harsh on my body. Plus for every purchase, they donate feminine care products to homeless shelters across the US. This is really a company you can stand behind. So if you wanna try out Lola so you can have peace of mind when it comes to your feminine hygiene, visit mylola.com and enter crime after crime when you subscribe for 40% off your first month subscription. And no more embarrassing trips for me. Welcome back. Guess what, Danielle? It's now time for my story. I'm nervous. <laughs> I can tell you there is no super intelligent horse in my story, unfortunately. <laughs> I'll see if I can weave one in here maybe while I'm, while I'm retelling it. All right. Well, like most good Florida man stories, this one began with several calls to the police. On the morning of November 6, 2018, a woman saw a man doing a slow, creeping crawl through her yard. She told them, there's a man with only gym shorts. He's just crawling with his shorts halfway down and no other clothes. She had no idea of what this guy had been through in the past several hours and didn't notice that one of his legs was bleeding very badly. The man crawled over a wall and into the yard of Jeff Black who saw him and first thought of sicking his dogs on the practically naked man, but then decided to have his wife call the police. Black Leave comment, it to one of the neighbors to be like, oh, this is weird. Let's make it weirder. Get him, dogs. Yeah. <laughs> See, we could have had a good turn of the story here. I know. But no, he held on to the dogs. Black commented, a little weird. <laughs> and well, Isn't that great? A little weird. To see somebody that early in just boxers going over your wall into your property. He kept saying, I was held hostage in a pool with gators. So that's what he's saying the guy was saying. Oh. When Ooh. officers approached him, the man's story got even crazier. According to the arrest report, there's those magic words. Mm -hmm. He said, quote, an old man had the alligators on a leash and he was surrounded by all these baby alligators in the old man's garage and that the old man was feeding him to his alligators and began forcing him to drink this black concoction. And as much as like you wouldn't typically believe that. <laughs> I'm being serious. Given the location, I mean, I was seeing similar things you to could, that online. Yeah, this could, if th I was authorities, I'd be like, eh, maybe. <laughs> if, yeah, if this wasn't a Florida man story, if this was like a Stephen King script or something, yeah, absolutely. Um, but unfortunately, this is a Florida man story. Nearby was St. Augustine's Alligator Farm Zoological Park. Uh, holding over 210 alligators, they're also home to every different species of crocodile on the planet. Employees were showing up that morning to start their day, and they came across a disturbing sight. In their Oasis on the Nile crocodile exhibit, which usually houses three crocs, they saw an additional croc. That is... A croc shoe was in oh, there boy. with the three Nile crocodiles. Park director John Brugan initially thought some teenagers were playing a prank on them. They had also found some damage to other exhibits and statues earlier that morning. But then they noticed clothing and a trail of blood leading to the top of a 20-foot enclosure. They contacted the police, who quickly figured out they were already in contact with the guy who had been in the croc exhibit. They were literally taking him to the local hospital when the call from the alligator farm came in. John Bruggen stated, I would think he's on some sort of drugs. I'm concerned about an individual who literally climbs up a wall that's meant to keep you from crocodiles and leaps over the wall into the water with them. 
The man was also... Wouldn't be my first choice. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'd be worried about that guy too. Um, the, the man was also responsible for over $5,000 in damage, knocking over a $3,000 statue, damaging a zip line and some part of the snack bar. In our 125 year history, this is the first time anyone has tried to go swimming with the crocodiles, John Bruggen told the press. Employees also commented that the crocs were probably terrified. They had lived in captivity their entire lives and didn't have humans regularly jumping into their ponds and running around their habitat. Who are we talking about here, Danielle? 23 year old Brandon Hatfield was no stranger to police. Just a few days before this, he was sentenced to probation for car theft and drug possession. He claims that the car was actually his own and that the meth in it belonged to his ex-girlfriend, but he wound up eventually pleading guilty to the charges. The Crocs shoe that was found in there with the real crocodiles was actually issued to him when he was in jail. <laughs> Uh, there's so many parts oh, of that boy. sentence that I love. Um, <laughs> one of them is, I think everyone that's in jail should be forced to wear Crocs. <laughs> I know, I think it's great. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that was a jail-issued Croc shoe that he was wearing when he jumped into the Croc pond and got attacked by one of the Crocs. Uh, he was taken to Flagler Hospital to be treated where he tried to escape getting caught again by police when he was entering a retention pond surrounded by barbed wire. He was... I know. It's like he is just drawn to this danger. Yeah. Who does this? How do I take a bad situation and make it worse? I know. Yeah. I just... I wish that he stole a horse before he did all this. I know. Um, Makes the stories together. There we go. Yeah. He was arrested and returned to Flagler Hospital for treatment of the crocodile bites and an ankle injury, likely from the jump that he made into the croc exhibit. But how did all of this start? When interviewed by the Washington Post, Brandon stated, I remember half of what happened and half of what didn't. <laughs> what kind of <laughs> statement is that? So he was on drugs. He might have I been mean, on some drugs. Yeah. Because his story to police originally was that he was in some old man's garage who had their crocodiles on leashes. <laughs> yeah. And was trying to force him into drinking, drinking some black concoction. We might get a hint of what that concoction is here in the next sentence. But uh, yeah, absolutely. And by the way, there is footage. There's security camera footage of this as well. You can see him making a jump from the top of a building into these this crocodile pond that's in this exhibit. The jump looks like from where he is, it has to be at least 10 feet, if not more, that he's jumping off the top of this little stand into the crock pond. And that crock pond, two feet. It's only two feet deep. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, so I think that's how he got that ankle injury. But uh, Brandon says that it all started at a Best Western hotel with a bottle of Jack Daniels. So that my that my friends is how bad night starts. Keep that in consideration. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Moving from here on. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't end there. That likely led to smoking some weed, but he's not clear on how that led to fentanyl and ecstasy, which were also found in his system according to a toxicology report. His memory definitely has a few holes in it uh, during this time period. At the hotel, he was apparently bragging to friends about his wrangling alligators past, which he did for his family, apparently. Uh, his friends didn't seem to believe him, so he decided he would go out and catch an alligator right now to prove it to them. So they all got in a car. I hope someone else was driving. <laughs> And they drove a few miles to the alligator farm. He scaled a, a barbed wire fence and several walls looking for his prey. Surveillance footage shows Brandon entering the park at approximately 7.45 p.m. And over the next four hours, climbing up on fences, jumping off a roof into the nearby crock pond, which is only, once again, two feet deep, and doing that jump more than once, then being attacked by a nine-foot croc that latches onto his left foot, he escapes. <laughs> oh my, it's terrible. It's terrible. What? But he escapes the Croc's death roll, climbs no. out of the exhibit, and finds a spot to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw interviews with the staff, and they're like, well, we know that he must have stopped here for a while because there was blood a all over this blood. platform. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So... I have a quick question. Yes. 
Did none of his friends think to call police when their friend jumped into a crocodile pit and didn't come back out for four hours? I don't think they were even with him at this point. I, I think they did. Well, it's interesting because one of the things he talks about is that he kind of felt um, like he had to do it, like peer pressured into doing it because his friends took him there and there was a couple girls that were there as well. So when it went that far, he was like, well, I got to go. I got to go in and do it. But in the footage that they show of him actually making the jump and all that, there's no friends around. No one's even near him. So I don't know if, you know, we're talking a lot of real serious drugs that that this guy was on at this point. I was about to say the amount of times that he could have died alone before he even got to. Yeah. The I mean, well, and one of the walls he's scaling, Danielle, he's literally scaling this wall, right? And if he falls off to the left, he doesn't fall into a crock pit with three crocs. He falls into the alligator pit that has a few hundred alligators. Oh, it was my gosh. So risky. This whole thing could have ended so badly. But keep in mind, I don't think he's in touch with reality in a very solid way here. And even, oh, absolutely not. You know, even with what he's telling police when they find him and then him trying to escape from the hospital, I think he's still pretty, pretty far out of it when all that's going on. So I think his friends likely took off at some point, but he was off on some other adventure in his mind. And that was just that. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Yeah. But, he's going to choose to jump off the same thing over and over and yeah, over again. Yeah. yeah well, I, would, we do, I would think so. We do hear a little explanation about that. But uh, when his head did finally clear up, Brandon found himself at the hospital. This is his quote. Shackled to a bed with my foot gnawed off. He also found out that his story had gone viral. He was now Florida man. If there is any good news in this story, it's that when the Washington Post interviewed him in St. John's County Jail, he was once again wearing Crocs on both feet. Oh, after, thank goodness. Yeah. After six <laughs> surgeries, doctors had managed to save his shredded foot. Barely. Uh, the Post was also trying to find out the truth about Brandon and trying to help move him away from the cartoon version of Florida Man that we've all come to know and often laugh at uh, up till just a few moments ago. Yeah. Brandon has a backstory. This is a real person. He was mm -hmm. the pro product of a divorced family, frequently bouncing back and forth between his parents' homes, struggled with anxiety from a very early age, started self-medicating using marijuana. By the age of 16, he got into prescription meds. From there, his addiction took him into other hard drugs, coke, meth, even more. Brandon lost three relatives in the past year due to drug-related deaths, including his little stepbrother who was only 17 and died of a heroin overdose while Brandon was in jail. No, oh, that's sad. Yeah. And what's almost worse about it is Brandon blames himself. Here's a quote from him. I went to jail and left him out there by himself. So he's obviously struggling with his um, yeah. with his stepbrother's passing. In terms of what prompted his bender that night, Brandon said that after his conviction for the car theft and drug charges, even though he was given probation, he felt certain that he was going to be arrested at his first scheduled probation check-in. So in his own words, if I'm going to prison, I'm going to do it big for the weekend and then turn myself in. So once again, it sounds like his anxiety is driving him to these, you know. Yeah, exactly. These, these situations and acting out in this way. Brandon even has an explanation for the second time that he jumped into the crock pit. Quote from him. The whole thing was I dropped my phone inside the pit, a brand new iPhone. That's when he death rolled me. Oh, my goodness gracious. I don't care. I mean, unless it's my children, if I drop something <laughs> in a pit, I'm not jumping in there to be death rolled for it. Yeah, seriously. Seriously. Oh, my goodness. I can't uh, believe he remembers that part, though. That's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good that he remembers something. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So there is an explanation for the for the second jump. But even at that point, I mean, I don't know that I would jump in that same way again. Wait till you see the video of it. It's it's oh a my gosh. it's a crazy yeah. big jump. And knowing that you're going into a pool only two feet deep. But uh, Brandon was charged with burglary, criminal mischief and violation of probation. He was sentenced to 364 days in county jail plus two years of what's called community control. And I had to look this up because I didn't know what it was, but. Essentially, that's house arrest. Uh, okay. where they're going to keep tabs on him and keeping him keep him at home. 
He vows that he's going to get clean, and when he gets out of jail, he wants to get into outreach work, trying to teach others not to become a viral news Florida man like he did. That being said, he doesn't shy away from his newfound fame. He says everyone in jail knows him. He signed at least 60 autographs for other inmates and will sometimes add his favorite nickname, Crocodile Dungotti. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. He's fusing together John Gotti and Crocodile Dundee. His story has created several Florida man headlines from the Associated Press. Florida man wearing Crocs breaks into Crocodile Farm, gets bitten, then arrested. Well, that's a short version. Of yeah. The kinda, <laughs> to the point. <laughs> Very uh, to the point. Fox News headline. Crocodile takes bite out of crime when half naked Florida man breaks into exhibit for a swim. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Miami Herald headline, half-naked Florida man caught on surveillance battling with a crocodile. The croc one. <laughs> <laughs> I hope, personally, that we see new articles about Brandon. Maybe Florida man follows through on promise, cleans up act, and helps others with outreach program wearing his crocs at a local Walmart. There we go. Perfect. Boom. Thanks to people.com, allthingsinteresting.com, jacksonville.com, Miami Herald, Fox News, and the Associated Press for their coverage on this case. And I want to give a very big special shout out to Logan Hill, writer of Is It Okay to Laugh at Florida Man, which you can read at thewashingtonpost.com. Really gave me an interesting aspect that I tried to weave into this version of the story. <laughs> about the realities that we're talking about here. You know, a guy yep. that is likely dealing with um, some issues already outside of the drug issues and then self-medicating those issues with drugs and putting himself in these bad situations. Probably, he's probably got an anxiety disorder that he might not be fully aware of. You know, more than likely. And then if you think about all the different Florida Man headlines that you've read, I swear most of it ends up involving drugs or alcohol, yeah. some sort of severe substance abuse. Like, And if you think majority of the time, someone's not going to make those kinds of decisions yeah. or put themselves in those positions unless there is something really, really wrong. And I, I honestly hope he realizes how lucky he is. Oh, man. Because yeah. that is all I, I mean, he didn't even actually end up losing his foot. He took multiple different kinds of drugs, jumped from fences multiple times. He was with crocodiles. They death rolled him. I mean, you, there are people who lose their life from one of those things. Right. And he ended up just going to jail for it. He had an injury and that's it. I hope he realizes how insanely, insanely lucky that is. You know, I had previously heard of that story before, but I had no idea how in depth it went and exactly what led up to it or anything about him previously. And, Oh my goodness, it is. It's one of those things where it is. It's very easy to kind of laugh at something and see it as something very basic and funny for your entertainment. But I mean, the before of that story, the fact that his friends encouraged it and then dropped him off and basically left him. They had, to, I mean, were they not concerned at any point in time? Right. Knowing how messed up he was. That? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's a good point. Oh my point. goodness. I mean, I wish someone it's... could have just talked him into the probation meeting. You know, I mean, I, I guess he like went to the building. He was afraid because he, I guess he had already left the county and he wasn't supposed to. So he kind of put himself in this whipped up frenzy about, you know, oh, they're going to take me back in because I know that I already broke my probation and they must know about it too. So he kind of snuck away from the building, you know, right when he was supposed to go in for his probation meeting. But, um, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I really like that the Washington Post took that approach with it. Yeah. I do think there is a way to look at these types of stories um, and have fun with them, almost like a like a bro version, you know. I mean, th yeah. and that's kind of what you see happen with the story when I'm starting it. There's the events are so out there that if you're telling this story, if it doesn't have the jail and the hard drug use and all that you could be talking about your dopey friend from high school and everyone exactly. sitting around having a great laugh about stories like this and i do think there's something to um the headlines of these florida man things being written in a way where they kind of have that attitude this kind of like you know 
I, I just want to keep saying bro story for some reason, but this kind of, hey, that's, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Hey bro. Like check, check this out. I know this guy I jumped into the crock pit. It's just, it, I think there's an okay way to have fun with that. But I was so happy to find the different coverage on this and to be able to share that with everyone. There's even a plugin for web browsers that will replace the term Florida man in headlines with person struggling with mental disability or person struggling with drug addiction automatically. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so wow. other people trying to raise awareness to that as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's been a crazy dive, but uh, here we are. We will be back right after this break. Hey, John, do you know about the new event put on by CrimeCon? Yes, I do. CrowdSolve takes place at the Westin Seattle from October 17th through the 20th. It's a weekend long deep dive into not one, but now two real cases. CrimeCon originally selected the case of Nancy Moyer, a mother of two who vanished without a trace. There was a presentation at CrimeCon in New Orleans about this case. A month later, a confession was called in, and then it was recanted. The Sheriff's Department is now waiting for results from new evidence, but due to these developments, CrimeCon is still honoring the commitment to the Moyer family, but will also feature a second case at CrowdSolve. Karen Bodine struggled with addiction and lived a transient lifestyle in Thurston County, Washington, but her friends and family remember her as a bright, beautiful, fun-loving person who always had a smile. She was also a mother of three. Unfortunately, on January 22nd, 2007, Karen was found dead alongside a road in Rochester, Washington, completely nude, with ligatures left around her neck and suspicious marks all over her body. Karen's family will be present at CrowdSolve to dive into the case with you. You'll have access to the unredacted case file, you'll learn from experts and hear information direct from the Thurston County Sheriff's Department in this immersive and educational weekend experience. The goal of CrowdSolve is to offer new insights and generate new leads to help find justice. To learn more about CrowdSolve, go to crimecon.com. Use our promo code CRIMEAFTERCRIMECS and you'll get 10% off your ticket to Seattle CrowdSolve. Tickets are limited. Think you have what it takes to solve a real case? Then don't miss CrowdSolve. Oh my goodness. I know. And there's, there's some wild stories out there. Some very wild stories. There sure is. As a matter of fact, we have asked several of our true crime compatriots to contribute to uh, telling their Florida man story, basically doing the kind of traditional Florida man search with your birthday and then seeing what headline comes up. And the first of those people, Danielle, who's uh, the first person we're going to see from here? The first person we are hearing from today is the wonderful YouTube true crime creator, Stephanie Harlow. Stephanie Harlow, take it away. My birthday is on February 8th, and on February 8th, a Florida man was arrested for hitting his girlfriend in the face with a burrito. <laughs> Happy anniversary, crime after crime. Stay kind and stay beautiful. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, yeah, there's a lot of these stories that have to do with um, people being attacked with strange objects. <laughs> Honestly, that's actually a majority of what I saw were some sort of crimes. I saw that someone hit someone with a cheeseburger and I actually saw one and it tied in real well to our very first episode where a boyfriend covered his girlfriend in ketchup to get back at her. <laughs> what? I know, and I don't get it. <laughs> What's that supposed to do? Oh my God, I've I've been covered in ketchup. <laughs> I honestly have no idea. I checked in it. It's not, I don't think she was allergic or anything. So it literally was just one of those things where random ideas popped into someone's head and strange things happened from it. I guess so. It's uh, one of those things that happens a lot around stories from Florida, apparently. But let's continue with... John Crimes, YouTuber and becoming a pretty good friend of both of ours. John, what do you got? Really, John? Really, Danielle? We're going to do the Florida man thing? Okay. Let's, let's, let's do it. Let's see what comes up for John Crimes himself. It says a Florida man attacks a gas station clerk with hot dogs, corn dog stick over beer. All right. I, I, I got to look into this. A Florida man desperate to get his beer Friday used hot dogs and a corn dog stick to attack a gas station clerk. Police say Monday. Kevin McDaniels, 35, threw hot dog to poke the female clerk with a corn dog stick at a petrol gas station in Marion County's official said. McDaniels' bizarre outbreak allegedly began after the clerk refused to sell him beer. 
It's unclear what the clerk's reason was. Okay. My intentions are very clear. I wanted to do this for the lovely John Lorden and Danielle Holland for my birthday on February the 20th. And also wish you guys a happy first anniversary for your podcast, Crime After Crimes. And thank you for continuing to be an inspiration for new true crime YouTubers like myself. Oh, John, that is so awesome. Thank you so much for <laughs> contributing to this. What'd you think, Danielle? What is it with hot dogs too? I don't get it. Hot dog tongs. Yeah. He he poked her with a hot dog stick. <laughs> yeah, and for anyone watching the YouTube version, John actually included a little clip. If you look in the oh upper right goodness. corner, you see the hot dog stick being thrown at the woman behind the counter. Oh, yeah. He's, and thank you again so much, John, because I know you're listening to this. Thank you so much for the well wishes. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. And even yeah. your small snippets of editing are still as amazing as your full-on episodes. <laughs> yeah, have, that was Have that to was throw great. that in there. <laughs> Absolutely. So who's up next, Danielle? All right, guys. The next person we are hearing from is another amazing true crime YouTuber, Amber Loves Mystery. Hey, guys. My name is Amber from the true crime channel, Amber Loves Mystery. And I am here to also congratulate John Lorden and Danielle Hallen on their one year anniversary of one of the most amazing podcasts on YouTube or on any of the platforms which it is available on, um, which is Crime After Crime. And I have to say that my absolute favorite part of your guys' podcast is getting to see you guys smile because I know being a true crime YouTuber myself, it is very rare that a smile or a laugh is appropriate when discussing such sensitive cases and topics and you know because these as you know have to do with real life people but you guys have a contest every month and i absolutely love it and it's so nice to see you guys smile i also think it's pretty funny when you guys hand off the mug to whoever won and typically John is the one who kind of messes it up, which is funny. So my birthday was December 6th. It says Florida man pistol whips and punches a woman over KFC only in Florida. And once again, I want to say congratulations to both of you. I had the absolute pleasure of meeting both of you at CrimeCon this year and you guys are just some of the best people. And I'm so happy that you are representative of the community here on YouTube for not just your individual channels, but also as an amazing true crime podcast, Crime After Crime. I love you guys. And yeah, bye. Well, we love you too, Amber. Thank you so much for that. What'd you think, Danielle? First of all, she is one of the sweetest people. <laughs> Isn't she? Yeah. She is. Thank you so much, Amber. Oh my goodness. I like seeing us smile too, honestly. Uh, oh, I remember that's actually, I think when I announced this podcast and that it was happening, I was smiling in the thumbnail and everyone was like, whoa, <laughs> what's, <laughs> what's going on? But I'm telling you, that's another thing I've seen is KFC involved in a lot of these crimes. Yeah, there's, there's a trend that I'm seeing. It's funny because through this past month, I started doing research and then I started thinking about, I wonder if I could write a program to actually generate Florida man headlines, you know, like get a list of. Uh, fast food establishments, get a list of different types of weapons, and then get a list of different types of actions, almost like a Mad Libs. And I think yeah. you, I think you could, you know, I, 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 it was a thing that lasted 20 minutes and I was like, this is too much work. I've already got enough to do. But uh, you absolutely could because there's almost a structure to how some of these headlines go. And you're yep. right. A lot of them end with either an odd object or they feature an odd object and then end with Taco Bell, KFC. KFC. Chick-fil-A. Yeah, Walmart. Yeah, Chick-fil-A <laughs> certainly comes up. Um, yeah, there's almost a, a model, I think, for writing a good Florida Man headline at this point. Well, up next is someone that you might know from the Missing Maura Murray podcast, also Crawl Space, and someone that's also become a very good friend of ours uh, over the two crime cons we've hung out. I've also done another event with Tim Polari. And what does he have for us here? Let's check it out. John Lorden and Danielle with no eye, Hallen. How are you? It's Tim Polari from Crawl Space and Missing Maura Murray. And and I really, I, I just want to wish you both a, a big congratulations. I'm so glad you've made it a year. 
uh, for your for crime after crime. It's a very joyous occasion and podversary, so congratulations. And I understand you're celebrating it by discussing Florida Man headlines. And I've got some crazy ones. Here's one headline that happened on a day other than my birthday, November 11th. It says, Florida Man breaks into restaurant, strips naked, eats noodles, plays bongos. But uh, I also had another one that did, I think, maybe happen on November 11th. I don't know. It came up anyway. But Florida man sold counterfeit cash on Craigslist. So just to be clear, he's selling legit counterfeit cash on Craigslist so that someone can fool someone else. Like he's being up front. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate including me. I really uh, think you both are great, and I appreciate you spending some time with me on on a Missing More uh, Murray episode that's coming up real soon for us. So happy anniversary, and thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, Tim. Uh, it's always a pleasure to get to hang out with him and Lance when Lance is around as well. Um, but what'd you think, Danielle? What'd you think about his titles? Okay. <laughs> the one where the man breaks into a restaurant, eats noodles, and plays on the bongo drum. That I actually texted to almost like everybody I know the other day when I read it. Nice. <laughs> I read it online and there's pictures of this man and he's fully naked. And he's like this older looking man. Looks like he'd not be suspicious, not be doing anything crazy. And I mean, he and the funniest part about this is he he brought his own noodles too. What? Like w- Exactly. Why Very did he thoughtful. Break? Why did he break into this restaurant to begin with? He yeah. literally just broke in and brought his own noodles and his own bongo drum. <laughs> and he just had his own little party. So that's wow. hilarious. A huge thank you to Tim. That was great. You told one of my favorite stories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, thank uh, you so much. Um, all right. So I did mention at the start of the episode that there might be another appearance that Danielle does not know about. Danielle, do you know about Cameo? Yes. Okay, so Cameo is basically a service where you can get in touch with certain celebrities and pay them a little money and they'll do a little video for you. Well, I was I was looking through Cameo thinking, is there anyone that, you know, we should have be part of this special with us? Danielle. Oh, I'm nervous. I'm sweating. <laughs> uh, Danielle, who is the host of, uh, oh, I don't know, To Catch a Predator? Nuh-uh. Crime Watch Daily? No. Apparently now his own YouTube channel. Are you serious? Who is it? <laughs> Chris Hansen. <laughs> Chris Hansen. Wow. Well, let's see what Chris Hansen has to say about Florida Man. Hello, John and Danielle. Chris Hansen here. My birthday is September 13th, and I was going through some transcripts the other day involving Florida Man crimes, and I think my most favorite is the Florida Man accused of trying to kill a man with kindness. That's a machete named Kindness, only in Florida. Anyway, I'd like to wish your podcast, Crime After Crime, a happy first anniversary. Congratulations and continued success. All right. Have a seat. Enjoy the show. Have a seat and enjoy the show. Don't you love that? I'm trying to get words out, but I'm over here absolutely screaming. Yeah, isn't that awesome? <laughs> that is so cool. That is the best ever. I'm telling you, you and find an awesome people on Cameo. <laughs> well, that was like the perfect ending. Yeah, like, I want to give a big thank you to Chris Hansen. I think it's pretty cool that uh, he was willing to do that, and uh, it wasn't it wasn't too expensive. It wasn't crazy expensive. If you want to have him record a message for you, just head on over to Cameo. I like how he was dropping in words from To Catch a Predator. You know? I know, I know. I absolutely loved it. I'm about Reviewing. to have him send me random like. You got this. <laughs> yeah. I'm reviewing transcripts. <laughs> sit down. I know. Yeah. Sit down and enjoy the show. Well, we did enjoy the show. We've been enjoying the show for a year now. Um, we do have a couple of other Florida men, but we're running kind of long. Danielle, let's just do the, the first couple of other titles that we had for Florida Man here. Okay. Um, one that I saw that I really love the title, title of, I wish I could have turned it into a whole story, but I couldn't. It was Florida Man tries to start Naked Fight Club at Chick-fil-A. That's never a good thing. No. Absolutely no. not. <laughs> this one though, 
Oh, boy. This is a good <laughs> thing. That's a, there we go. <laughs> Florida man denies syringes found in rectum are his. Well, wouldn't you? <laughs> you know, I saw so many of these were things like found in or on directly someone's body. They were trying to claim weren't theirs. But this one definitely took the cake. I don't yeah. know how you think you're going to convince anyone. How did that, that get those in there? don't belong to you. <laughs> right. Florida man finds a World War II grenade, places it in his truck, drives to Taco Bell. I told you. I wouldn't. I, I, would, I would never. I mean, That's I love Taco idea. Bell. I love Taco Bell, but I'm, I'm not going to take the World War II grenade. Absolutely not. And Florida man accused of robbing Chinese restaurant at Finger Point. That sounds, <laughs> I mean, it sounds dangerous to me. <laughs> we know on this on this podcast what happens sometimes. You can get poked a lot. You can get poked by yeah. fingers. You can get poked by a hot dog stick. You, you can, can get poked by hot dog tongs. It's dangerous. Yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> there's real poking issues out there. Uh, there's one more I just wanted to throw out here because Danielle knows a little more about this story. Florida man who allegedly threatened family with Coldplay lyrics and standoff after SWAT promises him pizza. It's absolutely bizarre. I don't even, I'm not sure exactly what happened with the family. I know he sent them some of the lights will guide you home and ignite your bones lyrics, yeah. but he held himself up for, I think it was like eight hours. And he kept saying to authorities, he said, I am not going back to jail. Like you can leave me in here forever. I don't care. I'll do anything. You're never getting me out of here. I'm never going back to jail. And they literally said, well, what about pizza? And he's like, eh. Now that I've thought about it, yeah, sure. Like he, you know, he's adamant for hours. He's never going back to jail. All they had to do is be like, you want a slice of pepperoni? Hey. He's like, whoa, wait a minute. Everything's changed now. I don't know what I love more, pizza or Taco Bell. But yeah, I, I, I might be tempted too. Uh, I did find a website called perchance.org. If you go to perchance.org, put forward slash Florida man headline generator. Uh, now, I earlier I was telling you I was thinking about creating a generator that would make fake titles. This is a listing of actual real titles, but you just hit a button and it'll fire title after headline title at you over and over and over. So if you want to keep yourself smiling, having a tough work day, head over to perchance.org, Florida Man Headline Generator, and click away. All right, everyone. This is it. We need to figure this thing out. Who actually won season one? We had a whole department crunching the numbers on this. One of us got 49.2% of the total votes. The other had 50.8%. That, That's not real. <laughs> that is real. I swear. <laughs> I've got the Excel sheets to prove it. <laughs> Absolutely. So, who is the actual winner? I would like to congratulate my good friend and partner in true crime. Danielle Hallen is the winner <laughs> of <laughs> season <laughs> one. <laughs> yes, with her own music. Oh my music. goodness, you're kidding me. Danielle, John. you won. It was close, but that last story and the way you thumped me on it, I actually ran the numbers a little bit before those that the numbers for the last story came in, and I saw I had a pretty good cushion. Even if you won, I still had a pretty good cushion to take it, but you thumped me so hard. You oh absolutely goodness. took it. So yes, That's these numbers- That's absolutely insane. These numbers are real. Um, but like I always said, uh, the biggest win for me is this type of outcome where we are just neck and neck. It is so close because we're both working so hard. We're bringing you guys great stories, presenting them in a fun and informative way. Um, so even though I'm not the winner, I still feel like a winner. Oh, John, literally just barely leave it to me and you to create a podcast that's competition based. And after a year, <laughs> we end up that close that's absolutely insane i know thank you guys all so much honestly i don't know how i got so lucky on the last episode if you i worked. hadn't gotten i mean i mean hey but we've had stories where sometimes i'm almost positive i'm gonna win and you get me by a landslide i was so sure we were gonna almost tie on the last one yeah so i really got lucky last time and again i also got lucky by having such an awesome co-host getting to spend an entire year laughing my butt off yeah. at the most insane crimes and seeing the most crazy things. We've learned so many things along the way. I don't know. I feel like 
and I may be biased, I feel like we have a really great recipe here for a really awesome podcast. And this is just another fun little element to it, but I would love it regardless. So I definitely yeah. want to thank all of you viewers and I want to thank John. Couldn't have done it without you. Does this mean I get to keep the cup now for like maybe like well, a month longer? <laughs> no, I did think about that and I can't go without drinking tea that long. So we've got a problem there. I have actually had a delivery man waiting at your home this entire time. <laughs> Will you please ask the delivery man to come in, Danielle? Oh boy. Delivery man? <sighs> I'm scared. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Is he at the front door? Did you call loud enough for him to hear you? Why are you guys so nuts? <laughs> what happened? Oh, what is that? Daniel's been handed something from you off guys, camera. Leave it to John and Powell to literally give me the most insane thing in the whole entire world. Season one winner, Daniel Hallen. You guys, it's a microphone. It's a trophy. <laughs> yes, the crystal microphone know. has been handed to Danielle Hallen. That is absolutely awesome. Oh my gosh, John, where did you even find this? <laughs> oh, Danielle, you have no idea how hard I worked. I worked so hard. I I really wanted something that, I kind of wanted something fun, but yeah. I, honestly, I didn't want it to be something junky that you wouldn't feel proud to like have out. Like I was thinking of like the golden tongs or, or something <laughs> like that. And I was looking at all these different things. And then I was like, you know what? She worked really hard. We've both been working at this for a year. I wanted something nice that you feel like you could actually have out or, or you know, have somewhere to celebrate your hard work on this. So uh, oh luckily I found this, this awesome company called ASAP Awards and uh, got that together, the Crystal Microphone. John, this is the best ever. Seriously, thank you so much. I was worried. I was like, I'm about to yell out to a delivery man. <laughs> and then I'm going to sound crazy. A delivery man's not going to come, but right. oh my goodness, leave right. it to you. You and Powell are like this team. You just like do the, I mean, the cameo and then this, you guys are always on top of some of the craziest stuff. Well, Thank he also you. told me he was worried because, you know, obviously I had to have that shipped there and he was like, you know, Danielle, she's really on the ball. She notices things, man. And I'm just, <laughs> I don't know if I could pull this off. Um, but yeah, huge thank you to Pal for making this moment happen. Um, and I'm just so proud and happy that we could do something like this for you, Danielle. You've been working so hard, not just here, but also on your channel. And you definitely deserve something like this. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. one more small surprise here. Oh my I, goodness. <laughs> I do have a message from someone and I am so thrilled. I literally just got chills right now. Because oh my gosh. you actually talked about this person no. earlier. Yeah. Hold on a second. Let me let me find this. And I just want to let everyone know there's a lot of wind in this video, so I had to clean up the audio, but listen close and I think you're going to hear a great message. Hi Danielle, it's Anthony Curcio. I just wanted to congratulate you on winning season one Crime After Crimes Best Reporter Award uh, for doing awesome stories and even some weird ones, especially that one I heard you did about the guy who stole the money, uh, threw it in an inner tube and got away. Uh, well, your co-host had contacted me while I was on vacation in the middle of Alaska, so I'm congratulating you from there eating soft serve ice cream. This is like my seventh one. Times have dramatically changed for that weirdo that jumped in the inner tube. Keep up the good work. Yes, Danielle, that was Anthony Curcio, also <laughs> known as DB Tuber. <laughs> I swear. Oh my goodness. I'm like, I'm sweating so hard. My glasses are fogging up. That is the best <laughs> surprise I could have ever received. I don't know what I did to deserve any of this last portion. That is hilarious. How crazy is it that I just talked about him earlier? I know. I, he, he tied into my last case and then here he is as part of the last video. That is absolutely insane thank you john that's so funny You're also so sorry to him because i i mean i totally put him on the spotlight uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's you know he uh, when i thought about could we bring on someone that we had actually covered in a case he was the only one i mean there's there's just who yeah. else could you even consider you know i don't want evil elmo wishing you uh no you know, <laughs> 
<laughs> congratulating you. Yeah, yeah. Although if I lived out in LA, I might have tried to get that footage, but I don't anymore. But um, no, it was it was clear that it had to be Anthony. And just to let everyone know, this is a guy that has turned his life around. And yep. that's part of the story that I love the most was not only he was kind of a brilliant criminal, but oh, yeah. outside of that, he was smart enough to recognize that he was super creative and he changed that and now writes children's books. So also, Danielle, he has said he is sending me a signed book, which I will send along your way as well. Um, I did let him know you had you had children. It's funny because when I first got in touch with him, he was like, yeah. uh, he's like, what other criminals are going to be part of this episode? <laughs> and I'm like, I Anthony. Don't... Yeah, only you, Anthony. There's there's no one else that we'd even want on this. But um, you could check out acurcio.com. That's A-C-U-R-C-I-O.com, where you can see all of his offerings. He also does speeches at schools. Um, but some of the subject matter in these books, there's one here called My Daddy's in Jail. What a great subject matter to try to help kids that are coping with this. And he knows it firsthand because his oh, family... Yeah. They, they basically stuck with him through that. Uh, his in-laws took in his family while he was incarcerated. That's part of the reason why he's actually in Alaska. He's splurging on them, thanking them for being there and standing by his side through all this. But Anthony was so cool to take a little time from his trip to record that for us. Also, just one other thing I want to call out. He's got this book called The Hometown Detective's Cake Caper and the Cake Caper. And the plot certainly sounds familiar it's about a bunch of uh, a robbery that happens when everyone is wearing the same pink rain jacket oh my goodness <laughs> yeah so they have trouble finding the culprit because he's also in a pink rain jacket sound familiar danielle yes that is absolutely crazy oh my gosh i can't thank you enough i cannot believe he was actually <laughs> willing to do that but he is i feel like of all people that was such a good ending note that was absolutely amazing because he did he turned his life around yeah. i've watched youtube videos he was going through a rough time a really really rough time and that's really what kind of pushed him towards a criminal lifestyle for that moment and to see that there is hope there that you can turn things around that's absolutely amazing i am just like so overwhelmed <laughs> with happiness right now you're seriously the best john oh. for getting all this together shout out to pal because i know he's listening to this he'll probably listen to it like five times <laughs> yep absolutely <laughs> thank you to him for helping john out and oh my goodness oh. but danielle there is there is a downside because yes. now in season two i will have my revenge <laughs> You sure will. The next, <laughs> I'm telling you, the next episode is going to be insane, and I'm honestly a little bit scared. <laughs> That's right. This is just the start. I'm calling this the season of revenge, and this is just the start. So everyone out there, Florida man stories, who told the best one? You have to vote. So do oh, it. Oh, my goodness, guys. Do I it. know. Vote right now. Up in that corner, the eye, the missing eye right that's, there <laughs> that's it we need it now for next episode danielle and i have been thinking long and hard what can we do it's the week of or the month leading to halloween so we have come up with i think a pretty interesting topic this mm -hmm. one will be haunted house and what we mean by that is essentially the scariest place that a crime was committed danielle yeah, you gonna... excited i'm very excited i'm very nervous i'm I'm almost nervous because I'm scared I'm going to scare myself. I'm really, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, I get weird about scary places, but it's also so fascinating to me. Pair that with a crime, it could go a little bit weird. So I'm excited though. I, and I have to buckle in, man, because I can already feel your vibe right now. You're ready to go. And I've oh, also yeah. got to start planning how I'm going to, prepare to get you something awesome next year <laughs> even if you know i've got to have something in place i've got to know because you just like blew my entire mind made my whole year made my oh. whole day so i've got to i've got to go in for next year no you got it and danielle where can they find us if they're looking for us outside of crime after crime you guys can find John and I on our own personal YouTube channels. He is Lord and Arts, and I am Danielle Hallen on YouTube. I'll let him tell you all of his different shows in a minute. And then I can be found on social media. Just type in Danielle Hallen. 
That's right. My shows are Brain Scratch, Searchlight, or Case Crack. Just search on any of those on YouTube and you'll find me, or go to Twitter, at Lord and Arts. Now, if you have ideas for an upcoming episode of Crime After Crime, you can email us, crimeaftercrime at lordandarts.com, or join us on Twitter, at Crime After Pod. Crime After Crime is produced and hosted by Danielle Hallen and John Lorden. And as always, we want to give a massive thank you to our patrons. The patrons get a bonus Patreon special segment every single month where we dive into a lot of behind the scenes information, go into current topics when it comes to true crime, and patrons that are new get a shout out in the upcoming Patreon special. I just want to take a moment. I really wanted this to be a special episode. I feel like we hit the mark. Uh, oh my goodness. So you many people blew it out of the water. <laughs> yeah, so many people had to contribute for this. So big thank you, Stephanie Harlow, John Crimes, Amber Loves Mystery, Tim from Crawl Space Missing Mora. Big thank you, Chris Hansen and Anthony Curcio. <laughs> really, really appreciate all the help with this, guys. I think we we hit the mark. Uh, if you loved today's episode, please rate or review us on whatever platform you found us on. The best way that you can help us find the other people that might like crime after crime is by talking to them about us. So tell your friends, tell your family, tell them that you love crime after crime. And if you love us so much, you should also go get some merch. If you didn't know, we've got yeah. a merch store. You can have some crime after crime gear. That can be a great segue into a conversation. So just go to www.teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash crime after crime. Thank you guys so much. And thank you so much, John, and all of our guests for the best crime after crime episode to date. We are bringing in the new year good, and we will see you guys next time on Crime After Crime. The season of revenge continues. <laughs> see you guys on the first. <laughs>